Hi, Lauren here. Of course, it is windy. It is very windy. I have just returned from a run. I participated in the Gawla uh, Park Run and I'm all still hot and sweaty. And I thought I'd talk to you today a bit more personally with a personal narrative about myself. The reason I do this occasionally is that, oh my goodness, I feel so sweaty. You know that salty feeling on your skin where you wonder, ah! But I, I needed to speak to you in the moment and I had some thoughts. So here I am, sweaty me, Lauren, speaking to you. I went to the park run um, and I wanted to share this experience with you. I receive a lot of letters from you about adversity. I receive a lot of letters from older adults who feel regret, remorse, grief, experience estrangement, loss. And I receive a lot of messages from young people starting university feeling they can't do it. I receive a lot of letters from single parents who are struggling to get a life or people looking after elderly parents and their life is compromised. A lot of you write to me that you, you say I'm wise. And I think it is useful for us to borrow ideas from other people or learn from other people as long as we are clear that everybody has flaws. I don't consider myself wise. I consider myself significantly flawed, attempting to learn, sometimes managing to learn and sometimes falling, uh, what can I say online, bottom over chest, <laughs> change that phrase. Oh my goodness, I look so pink like a beetroot. Uh, I experienced grief two and a half years ago, an experience I haven't shared with you, that has rewritten, rewritten my lens of life. And each day I have moments or hours where I struggle to get through this grief. And I think a lot about grief and how we process grief, how we get through grief. And in the course of my life, due to the experiences I've had, I've done a lot of research into generalized anxiety, ADHD, uh, other mental illnesses, uh, grief and uh, life through the developmental um, span. So, you know, I've done a master's in counselling. I did most of a master's in health and human behaviour. I didn't complete that master's. I did complete the master's in counselling. I've got an honours degree in anthropology and I've done a number of certificate courses in fitness, Pilates, uh, etc. I was thinking about grief because following what occurred two and a half years ago, I need to talk to myself in order to leave the house. I need to have a conversation with myself saying, come on, Lauren, you can do it. It'll be okay. If I have clear purpose, so I'm going to work or I'm going to gym and going to gym is actually quite difficult. I will trot off and do it. But to uh, leave the house without a clear reason is not, not always easy for me. So for me to do the, the Gawler Park run today, I found it challenging to leave the house. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that and my process of grief. As a young person, I 
remember feeling quite a lot of sadness at different times. And I think that was for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of the reasons out of the several would be that my younger brother, uh, who had ADHD and had a particular personality where he was really passionate about everything. He was passionate about animals. He was passionate about insects. He was passionate about the sunset. But with that passion came sadness. Uh, we once found a, a dead insect. I think the insect was a stick insect. And my brother Damien took the dead insect to his bed and cried for hours and hours about the death of the insect. And he said to me, why do people need to die? Why do people need to suffer? And Damien was extremely intelligent, uh, quite unusually gifted at a number of things. He could pick up a number of things very quickly. He died with two degrees. And if you've been watching my content, he uh, chose to take his, his life at the age of 28. But he was my younger brother. I was the oldest of six kids in a, a conservatively Catholic, happy family. Um, he would be so full of joy but, and so full of mischief, but so full of grief. Uh, one of the things he did to me, I'll need to share this terrible story. You know how Australia has huge spiders? I mean, we have huge spiders and I don't like spiders. Damien knew I don't, didn't like spiders. So on a holiday, he held me down. I would have been about 11 or something and he would have been about seven, something like that. He held me down and squashed a huntsman on my face. Yes, that happened. That is who my brother is. At other times, uh, I remember I had a, a boyfriend in my 20s that hit me in my eye so that my eye bled. And I was, the strongest feeling I had at the time was shame. I felt shame to leave the house. And my brother who had a number of challenges, significant mental health challenges, got on several buses to come and stay with me for two, two days. Uh, he was the only person that did come to stay with me to help me process uh, being punched in the eye. I do apologize if these narratives are, uh, are strong. That's my life. Anyway, to grow up with Damien as a younger brother, Damien used to take risks and because of those risks, I would be on edge. He would uh, climb over a fence on a walk and get on a horse and ride it and ride it and that was worrying. Uh, he took his life at the age of 28, but in my 20s, there were numerous times I would walk out of work in order to be with him, countless times. Or I would stop everything to search for him in the streets of Melbourne uh, because he ended up uh, taking drugs. So I would look down laneways. Uh, I can't count how many days I did that. And then when he died, I couldn't stop. I kept going down laneways and I would be with other people that took drugs or I would uh, help other people find their children who took drugs in Melbourne because I knew where they would go and I knew the places they would stay and I knew the housing places where you could uh, use and buy heroin. So I would go and help people and then I worked in those areas afterwards. But it was like, kind of, I was a wind up doll or a wind up mouse that was taught a certain script. And the script was, be ready to save your brother. So when he passed on, I couldn't stop. So there was grief in that and there was daily grief. There was also joy. There was a lot of joy. Uh, there was joy at times after he passed and there was joy before he passed and there was joy in moments of his life. 
but it did really impact me. I felt as I grew up that I was constantly on edge waiting for a call uh, from him. And I had over time a number of organisations that would help me with him. And then after that, I had other experiences. And as you know, two years ago, I experienced four deaths in, a, I think, about two weeks. And then something else happened. Anyway, I went to the run today and it was a wonderful experience. I was really reticent to go because I just wanted to stay home and write content. And I went to this run and I was running. Uh, I had my hip replaced two and a half years ago. So these, this is my first attempt at, at running again. I used to run long distance and I really loved it. I've put on a little bit of weight so it's not as easy to run. And it's a little bit confronting because when I try and run, I go, oh yes, that's right, you've put on that weight. That's right, it's a bit harder to run. And it's a new town, I've moved here, so I had to find it. And I'm running, feeling somewhat elephant-like. And um, I met these two older women and I ended up walking with them for a while. And I talked about where I moved in around Gawler in the Yatalanga area. And they told me these stories about when they were younger. And uh, one of the ladies said, I told her about my street, and she said, ah, Yatalanga's first kiss. And she told me the story of her first kiss. And she was, she'd be in her 70s, first kiss in Yatalanga. And the other lady said, have you heard about Snogging Lane? Now, apparently Snogging Lane is a lane in Gawla where uh, people would go and kiss and it no longer exists. And then they told me, and that was an awesome story, they told me the story about how they used to take their parents' cars, park them on top of a big hill, turn off the motor and go down the hill in neutral. It sounds incredibly dangerous. But these stories were lively and effervescent and I loved listening to the stories. And I ran with them over the finishing line and I got in the car and I felt joy. I felt joy thinking about Snogger's Lane, Rig's first kiss, and it was just, it was a real light in my life. And I thought I would just take this moment to be mindful that terrible things happen in life. But amongst the debris of grief, there is always the light of joy. You just need to look for it. It's a... Uh, some people suffer much more grief than others. And I don't think there's a particular reason for that. I think sometimes stuff just happens. I'm a little bit of an existentialist. Uh, Christian background, as you know, but I've got that existential element where I believe some things are just random. But does it matter what we believe? All that truly matters is how we choose to behave how we choose to reflect upon our behaviour, how we choose to review our behaviour, how we choose to get back up, how we choose to share resilience with others, how we choose to include, how we choose to take steps with goodwill, with good intention. I'm going to try and record again today, but I keep thinking about Snogger's Lane and these elderly people years and years ago kissing in Snogger's Lane, snogging, snog, snog, snogging lane. And I think about myself and what it's like to age and have memories, some good memories, some not so good memories. And I marvel at, I marvel at the joy to be found under each pebble of Grief. Remember when you used to go to the seaside, the ocean, and you would pick up a rock and under that rock, a whole lot of crabs would scramble away and you'd be really excited because you found a crab. I remember those moments. And life's like that. If you pick up the rock of grief, 
and you hold it up and underneath you can see all the crabs of joy with their crab walk, you know, the crab walk, running away. I'm really excited I left the house today to do the park run. I hope I do it at least once a week. My beetroot face will calm down as it does and we all move forward. The winds will keep coming and we'll need to continue to be flexible and resilient in the winds of life. And there's always, always another crab of joy lying under a rock of grief, a pebble of grief. Take care, everybody. I'll speak to you soon. Here is my garden. What a metaphor.